Hey there, Earthlings! I'm Jenna the Astronaut, and I'm so excited to announce Glazer Children's Museum's partnership with Cinespace. Cinespace is a film competition that challenges filmmakers to dig through NASA's video archives and create a short film using the footage that's out of this world. We are so excited to show you one of those films, Homo Sapien, today here on GCM at Home. If you want to see the other two, jump into your rocket ship and head on down to GCM. Can't wait to see you there! Bye! NASA, in collaboration with the Houston Cinema Arts Society, have invited creative filmmakers from around the world to tell their stories using footage from NASA's amazing archives. This competition was created in a partnership between NASA and the Houston Cinema Arts Society to highlight over 50 years of archived imagery now open to the public for non-commercial use. Filmmakers brought new vision to life using actual space imagery from NASA telescopes and robotic spacecraft exploring our solar system and beyond. With NASA's imagery of our universe at your fingertips, your vision is beautiful and inspiring. From this distant vantage point, the Earth might not seem of any particular interest. But for us, it's different. Consider again that dot. That's here. That's home. That's us. On it, everyone you love, everyone you know, everyone you ever heard of, every human being who ever was, lived out their lives the aggregate of our joy and suffering, thousands of confident religions, ideologies, and economic doctrines, every hunter and forager, every hero and coward, every creator and destroyer of civilization, every king and peasant, every young couple in love, every mother and father, hopeful child, inventor and explorer, every teacher of morals, every corrupt politician, every superstar, every supreme leader, every saint and sinner in the history of our species lived there on a mote of dust suspended in a sunbeam. The earth is a very small stage in a vast cosmic arena. Think of the rivers of blood spilled by all those generals and emperors so that in glory and triumph they could become the momentary masters of a fraction of a dot. Our posturings, our imagined self-importance, the delusion that we have some privileged position in the universe are challenged by this point of pale light. Our planet is a lonely speck in the great enveloping cosmic dark. In our obscurity, in all this vastness, there is no hint that help will come from elsewhere to save us from ourselves. The Earth is the only world known so far to harbor life. There is nowhere else, at least in the near future, to which our species could migrate. Visit? Yes. Settle? Not yet. Like it or not, for the moment, the Earth is where we make our stand. It has been said that astronomy is a humbling and character-building experience. There is perhaps no better demonstration of the folly of human conceits than this distant image of our tiny world. To me, it underscores our responsibility to deal more kindly with one another 
and to preserve and cherish the pale blue dot, the only home we've ever known. I believe we should go to the moon. Now it is time to take longer strides. Time for a great new American enterprise. Time for this nation to take a clearly leading role in space achievement, which in many ways may hold the key to our future on Earth. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. seconds and counting. Oxidizer tanks in the second and third stages now have pressurized. T minus one minute, 35 seconds. The third stage completely pressurized. T minus 60 seconds and counting. We pass T minus 60. 55 seconds and counting. Neil Armstrong reported back when he received the good wishes. Thank you very much. We know it will be a good flight. Good luck and Godspeed. 40 seconds away from the Apollo 11 liftoff. All the second stage tanks now pressurized. 35 seconds and counting. We are still go with Apollo 11. 30 seconds and counting. T minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence starts. 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one, zero, all engine running. Liftoff, we have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. There's a lot less uh, variation in color than I uh, would have thought, you know, looking down. Yeah, but when you look down, is there a brownish color? Sure. At three hours, 46 minutes, velocity is 18,917 feet per second. There it is. It's coming up. What? The Earth. See it? Yeah. Get up on. Okay, all flight controllers, go now, go for landing. Retro. Go. Righto. Go. Guidance. Go. Control. And go. Uh, Delcom. Go. Yes, Go. Right. Go. Surgeon. Go. Capcom, we're go for landing. Eagle, Houston, you're go for landing. Over.
four forward, drift into the right a little. 30 seconds. Tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed. Okay, T1, stay no stay. Retro. Stay. Fido. Stay. Guidance. Stay. Control. Stay. Telcom. Stay. GNC. Stay. Econ. Stay. Surgeon. Stay. Capcom, or stay for T1. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. I'm uh, at the foot of the ladder. I'm going to step off the limb. That's one small step for man. One giant leap for man. Go ahead, Mr. President. This is Houston out. Hello, Neil and Buzz. I'm talking to you by telephone from the Oval Room at the White House. And this certainly has to be the most historic telephone call ever made. Because of what you have done, the heavens have become a part of man's world. And as you talk to us from the sea of tranquility, it inspires us to redouble our efforts to bring peace and tranquility to Earth. For one priceless moment in the whole history of man, all the people on this earth are truly one. One in their pride in what you have done. And one in our prayers that you will return safely to earth. Thank you, Mr. President. It's a great honor and privilege for us to be here representing not only the United States, but and of peace of all nations, and with interest and a curiosity and with a vision for the future. Honor for us to be able to participate here today. But in a very real sense, it will not be one man going to the moon. We make this judgment affirmatively. It will be an entire nation, for all of us must work to put him there. I wish I had a little piece of chalk So I could show you everywhere I walk I wish I had a little piece of clay So I could show you what I did today Yes, if I could take you everywhere with me Today we'll be looking at the newest habitat in space, the International Space Station. Here we will see how Homo sapiens deal with the greatest challenges facing all of mankind. Follow me, Frederick Attenberger, as we journey to space to see exactly how Homo sapiens survive out there. Here we can see a female member of the Homo sapiens species. She is grooming which involves a ferocious massaging of a substance called shampoo. It is essential that this is rubbed into every root and strand of her hair. Otherwise, hidden, completely invisible to the human eye, danger will grow. Potential dirt, grease, and grime. Without access to constant supply of H2O, removal of these particles is a grueling, tiring process. For this male homo sapien, life without hair is so much simpler. Rub-a-dub-dub, -dub. one quick sweep and he's finished. And that's it! The barber ritual helps these animals to bond. Everyone must get involved. So this creates a strong sense of community. Once completed, male homo sapiens love to show off to their peers. Of course, this can be a tiring ordeal. Every homo sapien needs rest and recuperation. To achieve this, it's essential that they wriggle themselves into a cocoon. 
This will keep them in place. This can occur at any time of day. Indeed, each day these creatures witness 16 sunrises and sunsets, rendering morning, noon and night meaningless, until they are refreshed again eight hours later. Feeding time, Homo sapiens' favourite time of the day, features its own challenges. Weightlessness, crumb and mould prevention. Shh! Hang on a minute. Look, here, observe this. What an extraordinary sight to behold. A fresh floating strawberry shortcake. This species' diet mostly consists of pasta, honey and floating tortilla wraps. Just like on Earth, hydration plays a major part in the food cycle. The Homo sapiens hierarchy determines the role of every individual. Each one has associated tasks. Daily activity ensures the survival of this group and in turn the whole of mankind. However, playtime is a whole different story. This allows both the male and female Homo sapiens to exercise, socialize and strengthen themselves. Conquering the time-space continuum poses a major challenge to the future survival of Homo sapiens.